So this is what we're making. Yeah, so it's finished. The rivet is set and it's articulated. All that's left is polishing the bale. Uh, but just protect it so that you don't damage the cap. Hold it in your fingers and that's it. Done. But today we're making a cap for a natural crystal and this tapers this way wide part at the top so we're going to be able to set this like a regular cabochon. This is fine silver 0.3 thick. Um, I like 0.5 normally but this is the piece I had. And you can just tell by looking whether your piece of metal is going to be long enough or not. Uh, roughly twice the length of your crystal. Now you have to decide what height you want this because it's going to be like this. Yeah. So when, when you get this the way you want it, anneal it, hold it in your fingers, and I'm, I'm going to work from a flat here because it's easier on the flat and you don't want to have to try to push this over on the flat. So you're going to wrap this tightly around your crystal. Tightly is the operative word. And where it crosses over here, mark it, cut it, and then solder this with hard solder. So it's just like making a bezel. Now I'm going to cut this with a nice sharp shear. You could just as easily use a set of scissors. Make sure they're sharp. And then I'm going to open this a bit and just hold it in my fingers and use my flat number two cut hand file. And the reason I'm doing that is when you cut with shears it, it rounds the edge a bit. So I'm just taking that round bit off. Do the other side. Then we're going to just push this together, make sure the ends are perfectly lined up. We'll hold it in a third hand and put two little bits of solder on the outside. We want, we want to do all our cleanup on the outside. We want the inside perfectly smooth. Parallel jaw pliers work good for these uh, wide bands because of the way they work. Squeezing like this, it takes the twist out of the metal. So treat it a bit like a jump ring where you do the old over-under thing to get tension against it. And when it's that good, it's ready to solder. So just a small line of flux, top and bottom. Two bits of hard solder that you place with your flux brush. And we want those right on the join. Like that. Now, neutral flame. Gently on and off until you dry out your flux. Because we want the solder bits to stay. You can push them around with your solder pick. Nice and dry now. Up to the top and just brush back and forth on the join. The flux will go clear, the solder will flow just like that. Quench and pickle. Now if this were round, I would dome the top, but it isn't. So I'm just going to make a flat cap for the top. So when we take our bezel band, whatever you want to call it for this one, out of the pickle, we'll push it around here and make sure we have the right shape. Then we'll put it on this and solder it. Trim the edges just like a regular bezel setting. 
So push your bezel down over the top of your crystal, slip it off, make sure you don't deform it, lay it on your cap, and you want a perfect fit here. If it's not quite perfect, put a piece of sandpaper on your bench, scrub it back and forth on the paper. Don't worry about the open end. When you get this perfect, then we'll solder it. But before you solder it, once again on the crystal, after you've sanded it to make sure you haven't deformed it. So now we're going to just flex right around the inside and probably about eight pieces of hard solder. Push them over against the side with your flex brush. Now I won't be able to show inside of this one because it's so deep. But after we get those pushed into place, we'll solder it. So what I have is a piece of solder, a gap, a piece of solder, a gap, all the way around. Um, I know it's slightly a large amount, but I never have to worry about filling a little gap. So, and you'll notice I'm on a screen. So what I like to do is warm this up from underneath. The flux will dry out. We can push the solder where it needs to be with our solder pick. And be careful because it's really easy while you're pushing the solder around for it to flow. You just want to make sure that it's touching the edge. Now, continue heating the bottom. The flux will go clear and the solder will flow just like that. Nice shiny line all the way around. I find that if I try to heat from the top, the bezel usually gets hot and the solder jumps up on the side of the bezel. Where if I heat from the bottom, the solder stays down where it should be. Take it out of the pickle, dry it, have a look at your solder. Should be great. Trim with your saw to within about half a mil of the cap. And I would wait, after I get it cut out, I would wait to saw it, I mean file it and sand it, because this is fine silver. And if you hold this while you're trying to uh, clean it up, you're just going to deform it. So I'll cut it to within half a mil. And now we have our shape. And what I'm going to do is solder a small jump ring on that I filed a flat where the join is. And that is basically going to hold itself upright. I'll just zoom in. Yeah. Now all I'm going to do is rest the third hand on top of that so it doesn't jump around and put a piece of solder on the side the length of the flat area where it's touching. So that's about two and a half or three mil. Be sure to file a flat on the jump ring because it gives it more contact area. So I've got this flexed with my solder and the reason I've got my third hand there is so that I don't just blow this little jump ring over because the uh, pressure from the torch would do that. So we're just going to slowly dry out our flux. And the reason we do slowly dry out the flux is so that it doesn't so the solder doesn't jump around too much. 
So you can see my jump ring fell over, so I'll set it back upright. Now, the majority of the flame needs to be on the base, not on the jump ring. So I'm just circling the base. And what will happen is, when it gets to the melting temperature of the solder, it will just automatically flow onto the jump ring. You don't have to heat the jump ring. The base metal will do that for you. So quench it, pickle it, and put it on your crystal. Okay, I'm out of the pickle. Now at this point, you need to look at the meniscus, which is the curve on your solder between the two bits. Look really closely at this because there's nothing more depressing than getting to the very last bit after you've mounted this on the crystal and having that break off. If you have a good flow of solder here, it won't come off. If you see a little bit of a gap, go back and solder it. Re-solder it. So I'm going to push this onto my crystal now. And you can see that because of the taper of the crystal, there's a little bit of a gap here. So we can just go ahead and set this using our bezel rocker to push the edges over. I've got my jump ring down inside the groove in my block. So just right on the very edge, push this over. And by using the rocker, we'll just make it nice and pretty. No big bumps to take out. And because it's fine silver, it's quite easy to push to compress. And as you push it over, it'll, it'll work harden and give it strength. Yeah. So after you get that all pushed, don't sand next to the stone because the sandpaper will mark the stone. Um, if you're worried about it, you can wrap masking tape around it. But we've just done this to hold it so that we can tidy up the top. And I just hold it in my fingers and I'm going to just file that top edge until it just touches the bezel. Get it so you can see. Yeah, so that it just touches the bezel there, all the way around. So now this is all sanded back and I'm quite happy with the fit. It's not loose. Now we're going to take a burnisher, which is just a polished piece of steel, and we're just going to burnish the edge where it goes against the stone. And that's just to smooth out any marks and work harden it a little bit more. Then we'll put a piece of tape around here and go polish this on the wheel. Now it's time for a bale. Uh, you can go quick and dirty if you want and just put a jump ring on this. I like the way a bale looks better. That's a whole different thing. When you make the bale, you can make it so it's a pinch bale, so it holds itself and you don't have to solder it. You can make it so that it's riveted uh, you can make it so that it's soldered, which I wouldn't do on this because to solder it you have to get this pretty hot. So one one of three, pinch, pinch bale, riveted bale, or a jump ring, it's up to you. And that's our setting.